The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the, uh, what is it? It's June. It's uh, June 20th. It is the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, D.B. Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, how about we have an extraordinary one? Let's have an extraordinary day, an extraordinary afternoon, an extraordinary evening. The easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening uh, for us. Not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us today. That's right. Today, right now, you and I, we're going to go check out the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what the buyers and the sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but more important than that, during this next hour, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in right now, 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, you can always let those fingers do the walking. That's right. Send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question in. In our Tiger's Den, well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Less Show. Right now, the Dow up 147 points. It's a little over a half a percent. Trade out at 26.655. S&P up the same six tenths of a percent or 16 points. NASDAQ 100, the same percentage, up 42 points. Russell's up four tenths of a percent or six. Uh, semis are up about 13 uh, bucks, nearly nine, nearly one percent, nine tenths of a percent. Out there, so everything is mean and green. That is including the spot volatility index, which is trading out at 1516. That's up six percent. That is still below its 50 day exponential moving average, but price, in essence, hit the target that I was aiming for it to hit earlier today, this morning. Unfortunately, I've been away from the I just literally got back, so I'm just turning on the systems, and we're going to take a look at charts for me even freshly out here. Uh, so, uh, But this is what I would do anytime I would get down in front of a computer system to understand the message of the markets to try to figure out what they're communicating to you and I. And certainly we're going to pay attention to that spot volatility index as one of our uh, keys out here. You've got gold at 1392 trading right into major resistance. We'll see if it can bust through that level. It hasn't been able to do that for six years. Maybe now, maybe this time is different. On the other hand, maybe it's not. You've got silver trading out at uh, 1546. That's up 50 pennies. Uh, leading the charge, the upside individual stock wise, it's PEC. Well, uh, probably is an IPO too. That's up 268%. Uh, Booking holdings. Um, uh, some of these are up such huge percentages. I don't know if they're IPOs or not. To the downside, no IPOs is the downside out here. You got Mercado Libre off 17 bucks. Wayfair down 12.50. Uh, Kerna Corp down nine or 18 uh, percent. So there's certainly things to look at. But I suppose where we should first begin is the indices. So what do we know? Let's start with the S&P 500. That's going to be the easiest, not the easiest, but we're going to. Here's what we know. So we knew that we had closed or the S&P had closed inside the swing point. Let me get rid of this little bottom uh, bar there that's looking for volume. And we don't have the volume on the indice out here. Uh, there we go. It's a little bit cleaner. But here's what we do know. The May, the high from May the uh, 1st out here <clears throat> inside the S&P, that was 29.54.13. Uh, that's been tested tested and rejected as we speak thus far. You can pull this back even further. So we know we're up near highs out here. Double tops, triple tops, quadruple tops. It could be the triple Lindy for all we know out here. Is it going to be the triple Lindy? Well, really, the question is, is this, is this the top? So 
Here's how we're going to go try to figure that out. First of all, if it is a top, we're going to see changes in trend take place on the shorter term time frames first. We're not going to look at the S&P 500 because that's just six hours worth of trading out here. And we do not make decisions uh, based upon six and a half hours worth of trading. We just don't do it. Uh, we, l we, want, we want more data out here. So let's begin by taking a look at the 30 minute time frame chart for the ES mini out here. And so we can see that it formed today. Let's get the exact time frame. Yeah, it was at 930 as the cash market was opening. So the actual high today took place at nine o'clock or by nine o'clock. Uh, price was moving higher, was doing less relative energy. Stevie's Rhodes momentum indicator top. And what also was happening at that exact same time, it was the nine count of that TD setup nine count. Probably Mr. Bill knew that, was paying attention to it. He may have even taken a short, for all I know, at least short term out there in the ES mini. Well, then what do you have on that very next bar? You've got that bearish reversal signal, confirming in essence two patterns, really three things, because price was also closing below Stevie's green line out there. So what happened? when you get a topping pattern for this time frame for any time frame what you look for is where is support well in the case of the es mini and then i have well actually we do have the taz market profiles we would have said support would have been two different areas the first would have been the beginning of that td setup nine count that happened at five o'clock this morning and that was at the low of 29.53 price had no problem moving through that and then at 11 o'clock this morning price was trading below the bottom of its 30 minute profile that would have been the secondary the the third level of support has held thus far. This is the level you're going to be watching. We're going to be watching the rest of the day when it comes to the ES Mini. Why? Well, first of all, let's give that level. That level, which took place at 1 o'clock in the morning, that price point, that low is 29.43.50. We're looking at the closing price. I could give a darn about the emotion during that 30 minute session, which is really what the wicks are out here. And so we're not really interested in the wick of the candle, the lower shadow or upper shadow of the candle, at least with regard to support. It's all about the close. In this case here, the close on a 30 minute basis out there. All right, so that's what the 30 minute time frame chart has shown us what in summary it has the topping patterns that you and I look for price push its way down to level three of support is what we'll call it out there really level two the second breakout level on a 30 minute basis for the ES mini let's go take a look at the 60 minute time frame remember I'm fresh in looking at these charts out here just as you are so now what do we know well the 60 minute time frame also had a TD setup nine count that was a pattern that identified the top you got that bearish reversal signal what's price supposed to do push price down to support well that first level of support on a 60 minute basis has held that took place at one o'clock this morning that price point out there is 29.43.50 that may match up with the secondary one that we looked at inside the 30 minute chart i don't recall but you probably wrote those numbers down on your pad of paper there was also a hammer candle so here we'll pay attention to the wick just simply because of the candle that formed out here as we were coming on the air so at one o'clock you got the hammer candle now what you and I know is if you see a close below the bottom of a hammer candle if you're long you're wrong that would certainly be the case for the 60 minute time frame and what that means in that case is that price in the ES mini would go down and tackle the next support level 29.15 and a quarter hmm very interesting let's continue our Lewis and Clark expedition of the ES mini we get back from this break The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, Dow's up 149, S&P 16. We're going to continue with the ES Mini. We've looked at the 30-minute, uh, the 60-minute time frame. We're going to go look at the two-hour time frame. Of course, what we know is we're we're paying attention to the S&P 500, which thus far is tested and rejected. It's May 1st high out there. So it's made that 100% move of a move. This would be one spot where the market could turn. We're looking for early signals out here with the short-term time frames. We have some levels of uh, support that if they get broken, say, okay, this may be a top. You're going to see those conditions take place in the shorter term time frame first. If we take a look at the two hour time frame, it also generated a TD setup nine count. Now, in its case, its level of support, its first level, which it's busted through, was 29.51 out here. That was the bottom of a bullish structured daily profile. As long as price stays below 29.51, the message here with regard to this topping pattern is that sellers would want to go test support. Now, support on a two hour time frame for the ES Mini is 2915. 2915. Put that number on your pad of paper. So Stevie goes from the two hour time frame chart to the five hour time frame chart. So as we take a look at it, what is its signal out here? Well, interestingly enough, uh, you can see that we're in that time period that this bar for the five hour time frame ends at 2 p.m. And then the uh, next bar will close at the uh, afternoon contract time, and it opened back up at 6 this evening, and uh, it would go from there. And then you've got 6 to 11, 11 till 4 in the morning, 4 till 9, 9 till 2, and it just repeat, rinse, and so forth out here. But here's what we do know. You've got, at least at this stage here, at 120, I don't know what it's going to look like at 2, but at 120 in the afternoon, you've got a bearish reversal candle confirming that Rhodes momentum indicator. Now, what it doesn't have is a close below Stevie's green line. That's at 29.45. Uh, if you see a close below that, then price will want to test one of, in essence here, three support levels. There's really four. First, because price is trading above the top of the profile. 29.31 old resistance could be support. That would be one level. A second level, you could say, could be that point of control where both buyers and sellers are lined up. 29.22. And the final level would be 29.12. Now, a move below that would then set up a move to test its T 
CD setup trend line out there. It's breakout level. That level, by the way, is priced at 28.46 out here. So it really bears watching. Just the ES Mini on the 30, the 60, the 120, and the five-hour time frame chart. Intraday signals out here are saying we need to be paying attention. Doesn't mean take action just yet. Um, I, that action should have taken place at the open, not right now. Prices come down to support as we've taken a look at that. And you form that hammer candle on the two-hour chart. So it, it, support has held. This is not the time. I want to make sure that I'm clear with regard to I don't want anybody jumping on the short train right now, even though we're looking at intraday time frames. That, that train passed uh, because price is now pulled back to support. You've got to see other levels of support fail. And that may, takes us to the uh, daily time frame. Do we see any kind of a topping signal in the daily time frame? We do not. All we have out here is a test and rejection of the previous swing point from back on May 1st out here. That's all that we've got. Uh, we don't have any kind of bearish reversal candle. Price is above 29.38.25. I would say if the ES Mini closes today above 29.38.25, it suggests even higher prices. And that's really what part of the Chapman wave, the second wave letter B would also signal to us out here but eh, but I'll leave that work more for Basil than for me instead I just simply use my patterns that identify tops and bottoms and so forth and go through this exact same process that I'm doing with you now so watch it so what so what's that how do we sum this up Stevie says watch that 2938 that's 10 points lower 2938 you see it close below that that would be a real major rejection of uh, resistance out here. Yep, that's what that would be. Now, what else are we going to take a look at? Well, I'd mentioned the spot volatility index earlier. Actually, probably easier if I show you this chart. Because I did punch this up just as I sat down. So here in this chart, and you've, you've heard me over the last several days say, look, we're, I'm anticipating that the next top could form inside the market, the S&P 500, that is, uh, when the spot volatility index uh, targets its lower Bollinger Band, uh, which right now is priced at 13.17. This morning it was 13.13. We don't really, we, we get close. That, that works in our card game here with regard to reading the message of the markets. The actual low so far so so the Bollinger Band from nine o'clock this morning till now is has risen just slightly I'm sure yeah I know it has I think it was 1313 we're at 1370 four pennies doesn't make a difference the actual low today in the spot volatility X 1319 so it's hit that target level out here doesn't mean that it and it's but it's below the 50 day which is 1575 so it's kind of like uncertain as to what it wants to do but it does say to Stevie pay attention pay attention to for example the level that we looked at inside the ES mini that I gave to you and those other patterns out there to try to identify what the message of the markets what's the market communicating to you and I we don't get married to any one idea in this market we especially do not get married to any one idea in this market because it is trading in nothing more than a consolidation. I've been at the dentist all morning long. Uh, that's always a blast. Uh, and then they were running late and I'm zooming on the way back home and, 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 and a lot of traffic out there. You don't need to hear that. But of course, I'm listening to the folks switching back and forth between Bloomberg, my music, which I always like to listen to instead of all that, and, and the CNBC guys. And it's, it's just, uh, sometimes you just want to blow your brains out when you listen to some of these folks. They we're just in a consolidation. We're at the top of the consolidation. So what we have to do and the markets, uh, uh, the market that pulls back, I I don't want you to think is that if we do get a top out here, that that's it. Sayonara. Hasta la vista, baby. It's over. It ain't over. It's not even close to over. And we're just in a consolidation pattern. We're just in a consolidation pattern. We're just in a consolidation pattern. And since we've got the Dow Equity Futures contract up here, we ought to go take a peek at the Dow Equity Futures contract. What was it doing this morning? I don't know, but let's go take a look at it. At 9 o'clock this morning, well, I don't know if it was 9 o'clock, but it probably was 9 o'clock because that was the high out here close to 9. It was generating one of those roads momentum indicator signals. In fact, it did it with a shooting star out there. See, no real, just a small little wick on that candle. That's a shooting star. You don't want a big wick because it won't be a shooting star. 
prices below Stevie's red line. What does price do? Goes down and tests really level one and level two at the same time of support. It held. It held. Do not. Do not. Jump on the gravy train to the short side, not just yet. If anything, watch for the Dow Equity Futures contract. See what happens as it reapproaches 26,722. That's Stevie's green line. If it does reflect or deflect down, then that could be the A to B equals CD on a short term basis, a 30 minute basis, to the downside out there. If we look at the 60 minute time frame, were there any signals out here? The 60 minute time frame, no signals. Price did, though, pull back to where? To support that TD setup. Didn't get all the way down there, 26,514 would have been that number, but you can also see it had a camera candle. So the beauty about the Dow Equity Futures contract is that you can say, I can say, we can say, if price closed below 26,514 today, that would be the low of the hammer candle, then what the Dow Equity Futures contract is communicating to you and I is a move to 26,092. 26092. We don't have that confirmation just yet. Do not take any action because of anything that I've just shown you. Do not do that. Lastly, we're going to go to a break here. The 120 minute time frame of TD set up nine count out here. So the markets are doing what they're supposed to do. In that move higher this morning, they were signaling they needed to pull back to test support, which they've done. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now is a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, Ruby in the Den wants to take a look at the U.S. dollar index. That's what we have up on our screen right now. Now, Ruby, what I have out here for the ticker symbol uh, is I've got my composite contract out here. And the reason that I have that up is because if I go take a look at the September contract, uh, there's such little data that the profiles Although they're there, they're not as reliable as when we have all of this data. I could take this chart here. This is my etch a stitch. Instead of using the continuous contract, um, I'm able to use this tool, a tool with inside e signal, lets me stitch those contracts together more logically. And here's what we know. So let's just simply take a look at what we know right now. Or what you might want to know, and that is that uh, price is pulled back. The low of today is 96.04. The bottom of its daily profile, the current daily profile, is 96.03. So. I will say if the U.S. dollar index closed below 96.03, first of all, it's tested support and it's held. But it breaks that level of support, and more specifically, if you see a close below the swing point from uh, June 7th at 95.89, then you've got an A to B equals CD to the downside. You would have, in essence, what would be a Gartley sell pattern out here. So here's the A to B equals CD, and this would suggest uh, a move down to 95.41. It was one possible area. That's the one to one, uh, but it doesn't have to stop there. It could be 9491 the 1.27 could even go to 9426 each of those would fulfill the Gartley buy pattern it's it's not a Gartley buy pattern right now price just simply pulled back to a uh, key level of support and so you'll really want to watch 9603 and certainly 9590 to assist you with identifying where is the US dollar index headed to so ruby i hope that that helps you out. Now, we do have a question that came in here. So let's go to the question. The first question coming in from Earl, the Pearl. Earl writes in, hey, Steve. He said, hi. I said, hey. I'll say hey back to Earl. Uh, if news, let's see here, let me read this. If news event caused the pullback, which news event? Iran? Iran? Iran is a song. Who's, who, who, who sang that song, Iran? Anybody know? Any, somebody's got to know inside the Tiger's Den out there. Uh, they might even play it, uh, the guys in the studio out there. But I, I, I don't, is that the news event that you're referring to? But if the news event caused a pullback after the open and when comments were walked back, um, market has recovered. Does that change anything? You know, it's a great question. I am glad that you asked me that question. Um, and I'm just going to put up the ES mini. Here's the here's my etch a stitch contract out here. Let me let me just simply turn off the market profiles at the moment. And my answer to you is going to be pretty simple, or I hope pretty simple. No, doesn't doesn't change doesn't change my view, my outlook, or anything. And the reason is this. Um, the reason is that, Earl, if I go back and I try to, I do not have a charting application. I'm not aware of a charting application that allows me to click on a day, let's say March the 4th, and get all the news events that possibly could have impacted the market. How about the May the 1st? I, I don't, there's no way for me to, in essence, trade news. What I trade is the emotion of the market. See, I believe that a stock chart, any chart at any point in time for its specific time frame is telling you the emotion of traders around the globe. We get to measure the emotion of traders around the globe. That's what the systems do. Yesterday, the day before, the prior week, the prior month, the prior year, we would take a look at charts. Let's just take, let's go to the NQ. We haven't looked at any charts in the NQ. I don't know what's in the NQ. Let's just start with the 60 minute time frame chart inside the NQ. Earl, you know as well as I do that when we get, or at least when Stevie looks at a chart and he sees a nine count, either bars eight, nine, or the bar following bar nine, and they're happening, the hair on the back of my neck stands up because I know it's a potential for a potential for a change in trend out there. That's what it is. It had nothing to do with it. The nine count didn't have anything to do with the news, and the news actually came out much earlier, like around 6 or 7 o'clock, but the markets continued to move higher out there. So I know what today's news event is. I know approximately when the message went off on my phone very early this morning about the uh, downing of the drone out there. I'm assuming that's what you're referring to, but it was the, it's, it's the patterns. It's the patterns that are what are most important to me. And when the patterns show up, it is simply the very first thing is where support, where support, where support. Now, you might like just one level of support out there. Um, 
but that sounds great. I haven't found just one thing, like Curly, in uh, whatever that movie was out there. I just haven't found one. Now, when you get multiple patterns that show up on multiple time frames all at the same time, you know that it's significant. It has nothing to do with the news event. We just took a look at the Ismini. I just literally blown off the expressway to get back here, to get from the expressway back to my place out here, just, just jump out of the car to sit in the seat to get Skype going and get my computer system going. But but look at this. We, if we were looking at this, if I was in front of the system at 9.30 this morning, I would have sent out an update to subscribers because we're still long the indices out here. We caught that bottom. Now what we want to do is try to catch a top. It's no different. Uh, just reverse the chart out here. You're looking for levels of support to fail. In the case of buying the bottom, we identified a level of resistance that failed. That went ahead and got us into those long trades out here so here on the two hour time or 100 yeah two hour time frame you've got that same td setup nine count i don't know what do we have on the five hour time frame on the five hour time frame we've got looks like roads momentum indicator signal with price right now at 136 just sitting on support hasn't broken through that level of support it's sitting right on stevie's green line but you've got a confirming top by the way from a five hour basis if price closes below well, let's, let's, let's just say right now, because of the top of the box is held to support 77.21. If price closes below that, Earl, the NQ should target 76.13. And then below that, uh, price should target 75.07. It would really be an issue if price were to close below 74.57. I'm not saying it's going to do that. I'm just saying we have to be aware of all these topping signals. And they had really, in my opinion, Earl, nothing to do with the uh, so-called news inside of the market. So great question. Um, it's just that when I, and historically, these patterns that you and I are looking at, by the way, I, I my back testing on them was not an automated version of a back test because I really couldn't, I could have written that program but didn't want to spend the money. I could just simply go back historically. Now, when I say historically, just want to make sure I put things in perspective. Historically, before 1900, inside the Dow, where I can apply each of these patterns that you and I take a look at. And when I see them consistently identify tops and bottoms, then we know how reliable they are. Here's the deal. They, work, they worked 130 years ago. They work today in 2019. These patterns are going to work 130 years from now. So here's what I implore you, because many of you, we're in a age category here, and we've got children and grandchildren. And so what it is that I bring to you with these patterns, which are easy to understand, or I make them easy, I give you the uh, the ability to do this by just simply uh, subscribing to the newsletter and attending some, some archive workshops or live workshops out there. Teach your children. Teach your children this. Come on, folks only three real easy ways to accumulate wealth they're not easy through real estate by being an entrepreneur taking your company public and third by investing in the markets give them this gift this benefit we'll be right back if you're in the cd market and looking for a secure investment the tiger first mortgage program may work for you the security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. 
If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. Dow's up 176, S&P 19. So, so, Earl, here's I want to make this really simple for you. So we've looked at, and everybody else that's out there, uh, but Earl's the one that asked the question, you know, the news-related event, and, um, you know, does that impact my my thinking on the, the markets out here? We're, we're looking for confirmation. We see what's taking place in the short term, or has taken place in the short term. So that's going to be helpful with regard to any of this little counter-trend rally that we see that's unfolding right now. Um, he, here's the deal, Earl. Here's how I would, here's how I would, here's how I will be playing this i really be watching the spot volatility index it's really going to make it pretty simple i've seen what's going on in the short term out here and if the spot volatility index were to close above its 50-day exponential moving average at 1575 uh it's trading right now at 1494 um then we've got a signal to uh we've got a signal to go short expect a uh a pullback to deeper support um and let us not forget we're in a consolidation. We're up towards a consolidation. And so if you were, if I were to pose to you the question, we go back historically and we say, when's the best time to be a seller of the market? Your answer in a consolidation is always going to be at the top of the consolidation. And when's the best time to be a buyer in a consolidation? It's always going to be at the bottom of the consolidation. And really, quite frankly, Earl, that just leads us into the gold trade out here. Here, you can take a look at gold. I haven't touched these numbers. These were numbers that you and I drew in yesterday. Well, a couple of days ago, 1361 to 1392.60. We're trading at 1394.30. Am I? Does that mean we've blown through really significant resistance out here? No. There's one other line that really has to be drawn up here because of the bearish reversal signal, uh, and that would be just a tad higher out here, and that's at the 1434. Uh, but uh, but let's not worry about that line as we speak right now. What I want you to know, both inside the equity indices and with regard to gold, we're sitting right at significant resistance, enough significant resistance to be paying attention to. Now, unlike, 
um, the equity markets out here. If we take a look at a 60-minute chart here for gold, here's what we see right now. Let me just update the chart. Uh, we can see that price is moving higher, doing it with less relative energy out here. We did have a TD9 count earlier on a 60-minute basis, and price just pulled back and tested support. Turns out that it was just the point of control. That's where both buyers and sellers were. That was at 5 o'clock this morning, and it's since moved on. But it's moving on, and it's moving. It's pressing higher with the... Uh less relative energy out there. No bearish reversal signal, but I would be paying attention to that. And and it looks like we could also be getting up to wave number seven if the high from, uh, the spike high from yesterday. But now that's a shooting star out there as well. That's a 60 minute time frame chart. So you, you, this, this is a time period right now. Look, I can't tell you whether consolidation is gonna be busted through or not. I mean, I wish I could. If somebody is out there telling you the consolidation is going to be busted through, they've got a very cool crystal ball. I don't have that cool crystal ball. What I have is I hope to have just simply sound judgment. And it may sound emotional when I do the show because if I, if I just did this in a non-emotional way, it probably wouldn't be so fun to listen to. Maybe it's not fun to listen to. But I'm not going to bore you to death. But uh, again, this charts we look at are nothing more than just telling us about the emotion of the market out here. Let's not get to any need emotion. And we just want to keep our cool. And we just really want to understand that in this case here, with regard to Goldilocks, it's really right up against resistance. Whether it's going to break through this or not, I don't know. We looked at these shorter term time frame charts inside the ES Mini and the Dow as an example. And those are a little bit easier because we got those topping signals and all those time frames. And now what you and I are watching is we'll call it this intraday counter trend rally. Does price make it up to its green line at 29.54? I don't know whether it will or it won't, but we've got key support levels to be watching out here. Earl, I will say this with regard to the so-called, um, and I don't know how to, I will tell you, in listening to the radio, listening to the announcers, and and what and the way that they couched what, um, what POTUS said, uh, is much different than what I heard when I actually heard him say it. So, but here's what I do know with regard to stock charts. And we could go back and we could take a look at it, uh, but I'd have to pull it out and it'll take a little bit of time to set up. But I have charted every major war and skirmish. And there's one thing that I do know, okay? If the bullets are flying, what happens is markets hate uncertainty. The uncertainty that they hate the most is a international military skirmish. They hate them with the vengeance. And markets will move lower when that uncertainty appears out there. So the first reaction, I suppose, I totally understand. Um, and we'll just watch levels of support. And they hate them. And those markets never turn to the upside until something takes place in this case here begin let's say on, a, on our side or some side out there where it looks like there's going to be a resolution 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 can just kind of solve everything out there so i don't know enough about what went on today i do know enough that i always like to do my research and my facts and kind of listen to the way that things were actually said versus the way that the news media portrays them they typically as i have found are two totally different things out there. So, uh, but with regard to military skirmishes, Earl, if that's what this event turns into, the markets will head lower. The markets will head lower. How much conviction do I have behind that statement? 100%, because I've already, you go back. You can go back and you can take a look at all of the military exercises, skirmishes, wars or what have you, and see the uh, and, and see the impact and then also go and identify when the turn took place and you will see some type of event that was right at that turn as well when there was optimism that the events were now going to be resolved out there. So we got another question here. This one coming in from Brett in Martinez, California. He said, Brent says crude oil 
would appreciate your analysis on crude oil. Some type of bottom seems to have been uh, been made. Uh, can we please go over what areas of potential resistance be looking for? Uh, so let's go do that for Brent. Let's go do that for everyone. Um, first, with regard to, let me pull up the uh, July contract here for Brent. Um, and, and, you know, so the bottom, the bottom signal that Brent in Martinez, California, is uh, uh, perhaps uh, has caught on to is this one. So you can see the TD set up nine count. Bar seven was May 31st, bar eight, June 3rd, and bar nine, June 4th. When this pattern forms a potential, in this case here, a bottom, uh, that signal is going to come on the low of either bars eight, nine, or the bar following bar nine. And that is exactly what took place out here in Lightspeed Crude on June the 5th. Okay, so we've got that. That's the bottom. I want to make sure that I at least had approached uh, the bottom that Brent may have been looking at. Now what we want to do is go. So first of all, on that chart, let me pull this back here. Uh, this chart, and I apologize, you've got some lines going across it. Brent, the resistance level where Brent, where Lightspeed Crew broke down was on May 22nd. I believe it's May 22nd. The high of that day is 62.78. That's one level of resistance to be looking at. We'll go take a look at the TAS market profiles as soon as we get back from this break. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN.
Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, Brent, uh, I believe that the oil contract is rolling over from July to August out here. So I've got the August contract up on my screen. Even if I put July, uh, this is going to show that price right now is above both. It's a daily and weekly profile out there. And I don't have any indication of another profile. So you're going to have to just revert back. <clears throat> In essence, that TDST line uh, that I gave, even though it was on the July contract, you've got the day. It'll be the same on the uh, on the uh, uh, August contract as well. And and then other than retracements out here, I don't have anything else, you know, to share with you. Um, price is sliced right now today through the 0 0.382 retracement. So it, it, we're trading at 56.93, 56.68 is the 0 0.382. So you could see you could see something backing off here. Uh, this is kind of normally where the first level where buyers and sellers will make a decision as to what they want to do out here. But it does appear that price is headed to the next level, which would be $60.33. So I hope that helps to answer your question. So, folks, in summary, here's what we really know. Uh, we know that inside the uh, ES Mini or the S&P, we know inside the Dow, uh, we know inside several indices that they've all tested prior highs out here. Inside the Dow, it's 26,695. We're trading at 26,673. If we close above 26,695 today, that high, not a real good indication that the bottom is open and uh, where a bottom is, or the top is here, and we're likely to continue to move higher. But you and I have some intraday time frame charts. Hopefully you've heard the whole show. You've written those things down on a pad of paper and you know what to be watching for. And then lastly, with the item that you're really watching is going to be that spot volatility index. If you see it, trading and closing above. 1575 today, you're currently at 1492. If you're above 15, if you're above 1575, well, then today likely was a top. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Folks, stay tuned. My favorite polar bear. He should be, he should get an Academy Award for just simply being a polar bear. But the best polar bear on the planet. David White, he's up next. Tom O'Brien, three to five. I'll be back with you on Fantastic Friday. Have a terrific Thursday, folks.